This is the Minis Forum NAB 9 Plus, and it's the first mini PC that I've come across that might actually be the perfect system to start a home lab on. Let's dig in and check it out. Hey there, home labbers, cell posters, IT pros, and engineers. Rich here. I run a rather large home lab made up of old enterprise gear that takes up a ton of space and consumes a lot of electricity. Setups like mine are on the far end of the spectrum in what a home lab is or can be, and many people looking to get into self hosting or home labbing don't need a massive stack of gear in their garage. Enter in the Minis Forum NAB 9 Plus. This is the first mini PC that I've come across that truly feels like it's the perfect starting point for anyone's journey into home labbing or self hosting. Now, Minis Forum did send me the NAB 9 Plus for free, but this is not a sponsored video. Maze Forum doesn't have a say over any of the content. In fact, they're seeing this video for the first time the same as you are. And as always, my opinions are my own. With the disclosure out of the way here, let's dig into the specs and features of this little box and talk about why I think it might be the perfect start for your home lab. Let's start with why I'm so excited about this little system and why I think it might have the right combination of power, storage, and efficiency to be your first home lab server. Let's start with the CPU. The NAB 9 Plus features a 12th Gen Intel Core i9-12900HK CPU that boasts a total of 14 cores, 20 threads, a base clock of 2.5GHz, and a turbo to 5GHz. The i9-12900HK features 6 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores, and this little processor has a typical TDP of 45 watts and a max TDP of 115 watts. The NAB 9 Plus also features 32GB of DDR4-3200 memory and a 1TB M.2 NVMe SSD. Oh, and the system also includes Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2 as well. Let's dig into the dimensions and the connectivity of this little unit. The Minis Forum NAB 9 Plus clocks in at 127mm wide, by 127mm deep, by 51mm tall. The exterior of the unit is made of plastic, which, from a distance, gives it a premium milled aluminum look without the premium milled aluminum price. Let's dig into the connectivity and the ports for the NAB 9 Plus. Up front, the unit features dual USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports, a combined mic and headphone jack, a singular power button, and a pinhole reset. Around the back, the NAB 9 Plus features dual USB 2.0 Type-A ports, a single HDMI 2.1 port capable of 4K at 60Hz, a single Oculink port capable of PCIe 4.0 4X connectivity for external GPUs, storage, and more, dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connections, a single display port capable of 4K at 120 Hz, a USB 4 Type-C connector that can double as a PD in port for power, and finally, a single barrel connector for power. One of the things that I like about this unit is how you get it open to access its internals. The entire top of the NAB 9 Plus easily pops up by pressing down on the two front edges of the lid. From there, the top easily comes open to expose all the user serviceable parts within, no screwdriver needed. On the left, we can see the pre-installed 1TB NVMe SSD, followed by the Wi-Fi 6E card, and over on the right, the two 16GB DDR4-3200 SODIMs that make up the 32GB of RAM in the unit. There's also this little white connector here that we'll talk about in a moment. The last thing to hit on here is the price. How much does the NAB 9 Plus cost? It's available on Amazon right now for around $480, but I have seen it go on sale for even less, so keep an eye out for it. The Oculink port is an interesting addition to this unit. Oculink ports are basically an external connector directly to a PCI Express slot, and I've seen a lot of people hang external GPUs off ports like these, but with it only being 4X PCIe, I don't think it adds a huge benefit. However, I could see the value of hanging a RAID card off of it and connecting that to an external storage array for more storage. Maybe something for a later video. Hardware details out of the way though, let's dive into setting this up as a home lab server and testing it out. Proxmox is the natural choice for the foundation of a starter home lab. PVE or Proxmox Virtual Environment will allow us to run multiple virtual machines and LXE containers on this one piece of hardware and it really is the gateway to getting your home lab up and running. Before we do the installation though, there's one neat feature that NAB Plus has that we're going to take advantage of. The NAB 9 Plus has a cool trick up its sleeve, and that's the ability to install an extra 2.5 inch SSD into the unit to add more storage space. The 1TB NVMe is spacious enough, but I don't want to install Proxmox on the NVMe and lose any of that valuable ultra fast storage that I'd rather be running VMs and LXE containers on. The unit comes with a simple SATA connector that interfaces directly into the little white port on the top of the mainboard. This connector provides SATA and SATA power for a 2.5-inch SSD, and the SSD itself mounts directly into the top of the lid. 
I'm going to add an additional 500 gigabyte Western Digital Blue SSD that will serve as the installation target for Proxmox so that all of that sweet, sweet NVMe can be used for virtual workloads. Installation was ridiculously easy. Once I plugged in the little SATA cable into the header on the mainboard, I screwed in the SATA SSD into the top of the lid, connected them all together, and closed it up. Before we kick off the Proxmox install, I wanted to see what the boot process was like for this unit and see if there was an OS pre-installed or not. Reading over the details for the NAB9 Plus, I wasn't even sure if it came with an OS or not, and to my surprise, the unit shipped with Windows 11 Home. Which is nice, I suppose, if you were looking for a simple turnkey Windows PC. I also wanted to pop in and take a look at what the BIOS UI looks like. This is my first experience with a Minis forum system, and I was pleasantly surprised to see that it had an entirely modern BIOS GUI, complete with a simple, easy-to-navigate UI and mouse support. This isn't something you're ever going to be spending much time in after you get the server built, but I think it's important to fully understand all of the features. Let's get Proxmox installed now. This video isn't intended to be a how-to on installing Proxmox, but I did want to quickly show you the installation process. The unit installed Proxmox without an issue. I installed PVE right from a USB stick, and after specifically selecting the 500GB SATA SSD as the boot drive for Proxmox, the installation was off and running. Turnaround time for PV installation was literally like six minutes from actual install to boot. After the unit came back up online, I popped over to the web UI using the IP address of the unit and was greeted by the PVE login screen. Once logged in, my next step was to blow away the Windows install and provision out the storage for my VMs and LXE containers on the NVMe. To do that, we head down to Disks, selected the NVMe disk in the list on the right, clicked Wipe Disk, and said bye bye to the Windows 11 install. After that had completed, the next step was to reinitialize the new wiped NVMe disk by selecting it in the list again, and then clicking Initialize Disk with GPT. Perfect. Now we need to create an LVM group with the new NVMe so we can start using it for VMs and containers. So I headed down to LVM below disks, headed up and clicked Create Volume Group, gave it the name NVMe, and clicked Create. And now we see our new storage volume on the left. All is well, we're good to go. Now, let's talk about performance with this little box. Obviously, a mini PC like the NAB9 Plus can't compete with big iron servers like I have in my rack, but that's not to say that they can't be pretty performant. Before we get to my final thoughts on this little system, I wanted to run some simple performance tests just to make sure that everything was fully functional. So I built a simple LXC container on the system to see what sort of performance I can get in terms of networking and disk I.O. All right, this is the console of the Ubuntu 2404 LXC container that I deployed in PVE on the NAB9+. Plus. Once I get logged into the container, I'll need to install iPerf3 to test network throughput. I do that by typing in apt install iPerf3 and hitting enter. Once that's completed, I'll clear the screen and enter in iPerf3-C and then the hostname of a system in my network running iPerf3 server. We'll hit enter to kick this off. And results are just as expected. Using the 2.5 gigabit interface, I was able to send and receive data at a bit over 2.3 gigabits a second, which is right where we'd expect to see it. But what about disk performance? How fast can we read and write to the NVMe on the system? Well, let's find out. This command here will generate five 5 gigabyte files and test the maximum speed the container is able to read from them off the NVMe disk below. And go! Average read speed was 4,202 mibibytes, which comes out to an astounding 4.3 gigabytes a second. Plenty fast. So how's the write speed? Same test as before, but this time we'll be doing a write operation only. And go. And again, just an astounding write speed of 3,570 mibibytes a second, or roughly 3.66 gigabytes a second. Impressive. I don't want to oversell the test results here. Keep in mind that I'm testing this in a single container running in Proxmox, running the perfect world tests here. The more workloads you add to your little host, the more things are going to slow down as your different workloads share the resources you have. But all things being equal here, this system has plenty of performance for a starter home lab. Last thing before we get to my final thoughts here, let's talk about how much power this system consumes. I tested the system at idle and at full consumption using artificial benchmarking to get a good feel for the minimums and maximums you could expect running this thing as your home lab server. Interestingly enough, even when the system was off, it still consumed a little bit of power, around one and a half watts. When I powered the system on, we jumped to a peak of a little over 50 watts before the system idled down to an impressive 12 to 14 watts of power. In my artificial benchmark testing, I was able to get the system up to a maximum of 101 watts. 
Again, this was at the worst case scenario with a full CPU benchmark of 20 threads and a full disk read-write testing across both the NVMe and the SATA SSD in the host. All right, so let's get to my final thoughts here. I started this video with telling you that I think this might very well be the perfect starting point for a home lab server, and I still think that now. It's got a lot going from it, from the performance and hardware you get, the affordable price, to the power consumption, it's hard not to kind of fall in love with the system. It's not entirely perfect, of course. The CPU is a bit on the older side, being a 12th gen CPU, and the RAM being DDR4 or 3200 isn't the new hotness, but at least it's a lot more affordable than DDR5 if you want to add more RAM to the system. Incidentally, 64 gigabytes is the max you can stuff into this unit. The system is also really lightweight, which can be a pro for sure, but when I was pulling it out of the box, I will admit I was expecting something a bit heavier, which this system is not. There's also the debate about performance cores versus efficiency cores and what that means to virtualization. And the short answer is, it all depends on what you're going to be running. PVE allows you to configure CPU affinity where you can pin specific CPU cores to specific virtual workloads. And for what it's worth, the first six cores of the CPU are the performance cores, with the other eight cores being the efficiency cores. So if you really felt so inclined, you can manually control that. I would personally suggest building out your VMs and LXC containers and only manually setting CPU affinity if you're experiencing issues. You'll probably find out that you never really notice. All of that being said, if you're looking for where to start for an energy efficient home lab server, you really can't go wrong with the NAB 9 Plus. It's affordable, performant, energy efficient, and if you change your mind, well, you can always run Windows on it again. And that, friends, will do it for this video. If you liked it, throw us a sub and a like. And if you have a beef with anything I've said here, let me know in the comments below. Special thank you to our YouTube members. You guys help keep the lights on, and we thank you for it. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider becoming a member or buying some of our swag. It'll help us keep making these videos. And now that you finished watching this video, how about checking out this place over here of great home lab and self-hosting videos we've done in the past. If you're looking for your next great home lab idea, we can help.